Hello, Steemians, Junkers, uh, particularly Flat Earthers. Um, so this is my argument on the horizon issue. Um, there's two issues I really want to point out, or one in particular. But yeah, the first one is that we have a very distorted view of how big the Earth is. Um, and I want to demonstrate that, but I'll also leave a link underneath as to how big the solar system is to really hammer down how, as humans, we just don't comprehend size. Uh, the website shows a two-scale model of the solar system where the moon is just one pixel on your screen, everything else in there is to scale, and you have to scroll, and the amount of void, the amount of nothing, is incredible. Um, you know, we learn growing up that this is a map of the Earth. We learn that the solar system can fit on a single piece of paper. We learn that an atom can fit in a single diagram. Um, but if you look at the scale of the solar system in the link below, an atom needs 11 times that amount of nothingness. Um, and that's how much there, of an atom there is. If you look at the distance between an electron and a proton, um, the nothingness is 11 times that of the nothingness of the solar system. Um, and that's the crazy kind of scales we're dealing with. So it's not much of an extension to apply that to Earth as well. You know, we learn this map. This is typically a school classroom map. And as you may have seen some viral videos, you can't put a spherical image accurately onto a flat plane. So we get all these weird distortions where, you know, Greenland is slightly bigger than Africa. Whereas the reality is, let's have a look at Africa on Google Earth here. Um, this is Africa. Okay, and this is Greenland. See, that the reality is very different. Okay, uh, the north is, is like particularly stretched out in those maps. And the equator is specifically squeezed for reasons I don't know. Um, but even like even just the Sahara Desert is the size or possibly bigger than the entirety of Europe, as you can see. France, Germany, Stuttgart, um, London, it all fits in this. And the, the vast majority of this is empty sand, devoid of civilization. And that's the incredible thing. You can zoom in pretty much anywhere and you'll be very unlikely to find a city. Oh, look at that face. Oh, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, the, the, the scale is incomprehensible to the humans who live in these big cities and we look at these giant buildings, but they're actually nothing. So let's, um, let's go to Lu Jiazui, which is where I live, not specifically, but it's in Shanghai. Um, it's downtown Shanghai, has two of the tallest buildings in the world. I think one of them is the second biggest in the world, maybe third or something. Um, so here we go, a big sprawling city with beautiful crystal clear waters. Ugh. And we can see, so it's still under construction in this digital world, but in reality it's finished. Um, let's go to the height here, look. So we're at the same elevation, it says at the bottom here, altitude of 2,000 feet, give or take. Um, here we have the city, and here we have a flat horizon, okay? And I think, so the second problem is that round earthers have a bad argument. They argue that all you need to do to see the curvature is to go into a plane and look out the window. But it doesn't work like that, because at this height it's obviously flat. Okay, so let's go to the height of a plane. And we have to assume that there are clouds as well, because clouds are like 20,000 feet high, 30,000 feet, I'm not sure exactly. But that obviously destroys perception even more. So let, let's just demonstrate that. So uh, planes are typically like... 10, 12 miles high, which is about this height. And if we look, we can kind of see a curve. It's kind of de 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 debatable. Um, it could just be like the terrain of an otherwise completely flat plane demonstrating that. If we go out to sea, it's even more flat, you can see. Um, it's really kind of debatable. And that's assumed, that's without any climate or pollution or clouds. Um, in reality, when you're in a plane, you'll at least be flying over clouds or you'll be flying over um, and looking down at kind of a cloudy, misty um, distance. So you cannot see as far as you can physically see on Google Earth. Um, and in that case, you know, if clouds are, say, 20,000 feet high, we need to knock off some altitude there. And we'd be looking at the horizon of clouds here, which is obviously much flatter. That's like a straight line. 
um, very much up to debate. But if we go as high as the space station, the main argument here is that the space station uses fisheye lenses and CGI to distort the truth. I think it's about 270 miles high. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's not that high anyway. And we can see there's a clear curvature here. And there's no fisheye going on here. Unless you're going to say that the government has conspired to change the algorithms of Google Earth where it deliberately curves the Earth in a fake way when you zoom out, you know. Um, at which point can we argue anything in life at all? At which point is my fridge not uh, a bear that's in disguise because I'm, I'm plugged into the framework and nothing is real? You know, um, you can do this yourself if you believe reality is reality. Um, if you just have a, like a pretty good macro camera lens, I suppose, and a, a big beach ball, you can do this same experiment. Okay, so, so let's go back to land. All right, and let's imagine we're, we've got this really good zoom lens on a beach ball, and watch the horizon. Look at the curvature amount now, and as we zoom in, the curvature disappears. We can see a gradual flattening uh, the angle is now um, softer, and we can see it gets flatter and flatter. And by the end, you know, we're still forty miles high right now. Um, by the distance of a plane, it's, it's basically flat. With the the mountainy terrain, there's barely any difference. Zoom out again, and you can see it slowly rounds off, as a ball would do. Um, now, even more interesting is focus on the actual land be just before the horizon so in the background here where my mouse is hovering and compare it to the foreground and you'll notice that the the land here kind of rolls off it drops off you can watch it kind of get pushed down as the foreground kind of seems to get pushed up so focus on this area here and you'll watch it kind of get pushed down which is the nature of a ball or a sphere in any way you can see that get pushed down and the, the foreground gets pushed up and then suddenly we're flat again uh, again we're at the, the height of a plane right now about 10 miles you can see in the corner um, now if another thing I can show to further demonstrate this is from here from either side of what we can see we have we have down here we have a, a latitude of one oh one ten point three six and over here we have one eight one oh eight okay so let's say it's a difference of two degrees roughly uh let's look down straight down on earth so two degrees let's have a look so from here to here uh one oh nine to it's barely point five degrees when you're looking straight down so we need to zoom out some more um Let's see what this is. So 109.5, 107.5, that's perfect. Okay, so oops, so this would be about roughly the same distance on the horizon that we just saw that was flat. Okay, you can imagine that the sea is above the line, uh, the sky is above the line, the sea is below the line. Let's just imagine that. Um, so let, that's what we can see essentially from the flat, from the height of a plane, an airplane. So if we zoom out and we'll see how small that line is in the grand scheme of the gigantic Earth that we live on. See, it is essentially nothing. It's a blip, and and that's the incredible thing. It, we can further demonstrate this by. Okay, so it's about that big. Put it on the edge of the Earth here. Um. Oh God. Let me just clear that. And we mimic the size, which was like this. We can even go bigger. Let's even double that size. Um, and look at how much curve is actually happening on this faint yellow line here. There's almost no curvature. Okay, that even, I did double the size. So let's say 20, 30,000 feet, 30, 30 miles high. Um, there's still almost no curvature. Even right now, look, we are 6,000 miles high. This is many, many more times higher than the uh, space station. And we can see Asia and Europe 
together and parts of Africa, it fits on kind of a small plane of the earth, which can all, all of this can fit into the Indian Ocean. Almost all of it can fit into the Indian Ocean and more, you know, and then some into the Pacific, which you have to scroll around the earth to get from one side to the south side to the north side. It's gigantic. The Pacific Ocean can fit all of that plane in again. The Indian can fit it once more. Um, you know, the, the Atlantic, if it wasn't long and it was rounded, you could fit it all again. The Americas, again. Um, you know, that's a tiny, tiny percentage. So I think the argument of getting on a plane to seeing a curve is a bad argument when all you can really see is that much of a degree of the Earth. Um, you would need to personally go into the space station, which is about 270 miles high, to actually see the curves for yourself. And un until we actually get to a, the age of space where everyone can freely go and see for themselves, you have to rely just on your knowledge of, of balls. And as I say, don't imagine this is the Earth. Imagine it's just a ball, and this, and you're focusing, you're zooming in on the ball to an extreme degree. Um, probably need a, a macro lens that's probably not available <laughs> or existing maybe some kind of super microscope I don't know um, but that just demonstrates how huge the earth is see that um, again you can do this with any ball uh, it's not just the earth it's not Google Earth you can touch it with your hands it's a very real phenomenon um, so the horizon argument is bad. I think this is a, a wonderful argument to show the curvature of the Earth. Uh, I will address further arguments below. Thank you for listening.